Shem was a youthful boy who lived in a remote land. He was raised in a modest household with his mother Lor, who is a housewife, and his father Dairon, a farmer who works tirelessly in the rice fields. Shem loves to eat greens, but he does not drink an adequate amount of water. Despite having a thin physical appearance, Shem is known for being outgoing and enjoy playing outside with his friends until dusk in the rice fields. His father would pick him up on the way home and then one day the family watched a television weather report while they were having their meal. Super Typhoon Larius, locally named Leonor, made landfall on 16 January 2021 in Surigao del Norte province before crossing the central southern Philippines, specifically the Visayas and Mindanao Islands, with maximum sustained winds of 195 km per hour and gustiness of 260 km per hour. Intensifying from a tropical storm to a super typhoon within hours, Larius brought torrential rains, violent winds, landslides, and storm surges making nine landfalls in seven provinces. Initial data suggested that Caraga and Region 6, 7, 8, and 4B Mimaropa were hit hardest, with communities in Surigao del Norte, Dinagat Island, Southern Leyte, Bohol, and Cebu most severely affected. Priority needs include food, potable water, temporary shelter, fuel, hygiene kits, and medical supplies as well as protection services. Lore told Shem to not play outside for a while until floods subside as stagnant waters are prone to mosquitoes. Shem disobeyed his mother and went out to play with his friends even though he was reminded not to because of the stagnant surface water in the rice fields which was caused by the typhoon. Shem experiences fever and chills over the following days. Shem's mother requested Dairon to take him to the nearest clinic, but Shem's father argued that it was just common flu. Traveling there would be a constraint because they live in a remote area and it would take them hours to arrive. Shem was still tormented with the same condition after a week had gone by, and each day he showed signs of his declining health. They didn't notice Shem's left leg was swollen until they took him to the clinic. Once they arrived at the clinic, the nurse assisted them to the emergency room where they conducted brief examinations on Shem's health while they waited for the doctor for his further assessments. Shem was considered as having lymphatic filariasis after several assessments. The doctor goes on to briefly describe the illness. The infection spreads from person to person by mosquito bites. In Shem's case, he may have gotten it from the stagnant surface, water in the rice fields while playing at dusk. The adult worm lives in the human lymph vessels, mates, and produces millions of microscopic worms, also known as microfilariae. Microfilariae circulate in the person's blood and infect the mosquito when it bites a person who is infected. Microfilariae grow and develop in the mosquito. When the mosquito bites another person, the larval worms pass from the mosquito into the human skin and travel to the lymph vessels. The swelling and the decreased function of the lymph system make it difficult for the body to fight germs and infections. To further understand his condition, we must first learn about the lymphatic system as this system is the most affected by parasitic diseases such as lymphatic filariasis. The lymphatic system is a part of our immune system and it is a network of tissues, vessels, and organs that work together to move a colorless, watery fluid called lymph back into your circulatory system or your bloodstream. The lymphatic system consists of many parts. These include lymph, lymph nodes and vessels, collecting ducts, spleen, thymus, tonsils, and adenoids, bone marrow, payers patches, and appendix. Lymph, a colorless fluid that circulates throughout the lymphatic system. Lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are bean-shaped glands that monitor and cleanse the lymph as it filters through them. Lymphatic vessels. Lymphatic vessels are the network of capillaries or microvessels and a large network of tubes located throughout your body that transport lymph away from tissues. Collecting ducts. 
Its role is to transport urine and absorb water. Spleen, a fish-sized organ in the upper left part of the belly that protects the body by clearing worn-out red blood cells. Thymus, this organ is located in the upper chest beneath the breastbone. It makes the white blood cells which protect the body against infections. Tonsils and adenoids. They are your body first line of defense against foreign invaders. Examples are germs and bacteria. Bone marrow. This is the soft, spongy tissue in the center of cer certain bones, containing many blood vessels. Payer's patches. These are small masses, lymphatic tissues in the mucous membrane that lines your small intestine. Appendix. It is a worm-shaped tube attached to the large intestine in the human body. The lymphatic system has many functions. Its key functions include maintaining fluid levels in the body. The lymphatic system collects excess fluid that drains from cells and tissue throughout your body and returns it to your bloodstream, which is then recirculated through your body. Absorbing fats from the digestive tract. Lymph includes fluids from intestines that contains fats and proteins and transports it back to the bloodstream. Protecting the body against foreign invaders. The lymphatic system is part of the immune system. It produces and releases lymphocytes, white blood cells, and other immune cells that monitor and then destroy the foreign invaders, such as bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi that may enter your body, transports and removes waste products and abnormal cells from the lymph. The process of lymphatic system. The blood in the arteries, the blood vessels that carry blood away from the heart is under pressure in the circulatory system because as the heart contracts, the blood is under pressure and is pressing against the walls of the arteries. The capillary walls contain holes in them. And when the pressure is high enough, the blood begins to leak out of these holes. The lymph is what seeps out at this stage and is composed entirely of plasma, along with a small amount of proteins. And because capillaries are prevalent all over our body, this means that wherever they are located, the plasma will leak out to produce the lymph. Every time blood passes through capillaries, it begins to lose some of its plasma, thickening up and becoming more difficult to circulate. As oxygen is depleted from the blood, cells eventually begin to perish. As the lymph builds up in our tissue, it begins to press against the cells, causing the tissue to enlarge, resulting in swellings. Fortunately, our body has separate vessels called lymph vessels, which clear out this lymph from our tissues. Since lymph is essentially plasma that has leaked out of the blood, it makes it logical to return it back into the bloodstream by having these lymph channels finally linked to a vein. Doc, what would be your advice in managing our health and environment to avoid acquiring this disease? The lymphatic system is vital for healthy immune function and defending against potentially harmful pathogens. That's why it's important to better understand how you can take care of our own lymphatic system. First is to drink plenty of water. Dehydration is one of the most common causes of lymphatic congestion, which can further exacerbate existing lymph problems. Drinking sufficient water throughout the day encourages healthy lymphatic function and reduces water retention. Second is active movement. While the human heart is responsible for pumping fresh blood around the body, the lymphatic system relies on movement of smooth muscle tissue to carry fluid toward lymph nodes. Engaging in different forms of exercise can promote healthy lymphatic activity whether that's a run, walk, or regular standing up and stretching throughout the day. Lastly, maintain a nutrient-rich diet, prioritizing a diet rich in fresh fruit and vegetables, and limiting processed foods and beverages can improve overall health by supporting healthy detoxification, boosting the immune system, and promoting optimal lymph function. In the prevention and control of lymphatic filariasis, the best way to prevent is to avoid mosquito bites. The mosquitoes that carry the microscopic worms usually bite between the hours of dusk and dawn. At night, sleep under a mosquito net or just make sure 
that there are no possible entrances for mosquitoes. While between dust and dawn, wear long sleeves and trousers, and use mosquito repellent on exposed skin. Thank you for the information, Doc, and we will surely follow your advice. You're welcome. Now let us discuss Shem's treatment.